Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the Apex Trader Funding Series, where we sh showcase the PA accounts that we have built up, and we're sharing the journey towards the first payout. Uh, real quick, if you're new here, then you're going to want to go back in the series and just see week by week where the accounts were. But we had a, a poor week early, and we actually blew half of the PAs. So we have 10 PAs left. Let me show you the account balances real quick. All right, so here we are. If, as you can see at the bottom here, there's about 10 PA accounts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A lot of them with minus 2,400, minus 2,000. What this means is uh, they are really on the ropes. If I lose about $50, then pre pretty sure all 10 of these accounts are going to be gone because some of these accounts had profits in it and it's a trailing drawdown. What happened was uh, Monday was a uh, a break-even day Tuesday I had a terrible day it was actually my worst day in terms of points that I had ever had it was four losses in a row of minus 40 points typical stop losses about 10 points and honestly ever since I had the issue with the ninja trader glitch uh, I've been I've been trading scared every single day I would wake up I would before I would start my day I would meditate and everything and I would be afraid uh, it was just a mindset thing because I took a, like 1100 in drawdown, which is half of my safety net. And we went over the risk of ruin every time with my strategies. I wouldn't lose the accounts as long as I had the certain amount of buffer and I had my certain strategy of my specific win rate. Because I was trading scared after, I, was, I wasn't taking trades that ended up being winners. And then I ended up taking trades. It just happened. I was taking the trades that were losers. So... As an example, let's say my setup would come, uh, I would take it, it would be a loss, and then my setup would come again, and I wouldn't take it, and it'd be a win, and then my setup would come again, and then I would take it, and it would be a loss. And ever since I had the, the little issue with the Ninja Trader, and if you're unfamiliar with talking about with the issue of Ninja Trader, I'll link it up in the cards, but I highly suggest you watch that video. If you plan on trading 20 accounts with Apex or using a trade copier and trading multiple accounts, you need to watch that video. Uh, in summary, uh, it basically boils down to, you, you, can, you can only take uh, a few trades within a 30 minute span. So if you're scalping with a lot of accounts and you take multiple trades within a same 30 minute span, you're gonna get blocked and you won't be able to close your position for until the time resets. So it could be 15 minutes, could be 10 minutes, could be 20 minutes. For me, I was stuck in the trade about 15 to 20 minutes and I took an $1,100 loss because there's about 50 points of NQ drawdown that I took and I couldn't close my position. Ever since then, I've been trading scared and yeah, so, to, to sum it up, basically, uh, I have half, I had 17 PA accounts, 50K accounts, now I have 10 of them, but I'm, I'm not trading them right now. I'm just trading these 10 150K evals. There was a 80% off sale. So I grabbed about uh, 10 of them for $60 each, which means I grabbed about uh, these accounts for about $600. And I'm just retrading my strategy and I'm not scared at all. I've been way more confident. It's honestly, once I started trading these fresh evals with my account, I it feels like a huge weight's been lifted off my shoulders. Uh, you've probably been there before. Like when you're close to blowing an account, uh, especially the, the, the pressure of, of showcasing all live, you don't want to blow the account. So because of that, your psychology is totally shifted and you just don't trade well. So I wasn't trading well and now I'm back to trading well. So. We're gonna showcase the journey getting these to PAs and the first um, withdrawal. So just so you know, for the 150Ks, I have a 5,000 of drawdown room and my target is 9,000. Uh, also, just so you know, if you only plan on getting one or two or three accounts, the 50K account is the best bang for your buck. If you plan on getting 10 or 20 accounts, then 150K is the best bang for your buck. Reason being is because once you make, once you pass a 50K account, the PA, the, the, the cost it is to turn into a real account, is the same for all the account sizes. So uh, the bigger accounts are better in for the second stage type of thing, but the bigger accounts cost more upfront. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you wanna make a full video on the comparison for Apex, but just so you know, if you're doing one or two accounts, 50K account is the best bang for your buck. If you're planning on doing 10 or 20 accounts, then you may as well go for the 150Ks. So that's where we're at. Um, we're gonna trade these 10 accounts. Uh, I'm trading right now two contracts just to get confidence and then after i gain confidence i'm going to be trading three contracts now we're going to go over to the risk of ruin and i'm going to run through some numbers uh, the current strategy i'm using is actually shifting towards using uh, the three minute chart on nq and i'll explain the strategy shortly but let's go over the risk of ruin calculator 
I'm trading the NQ three minute. Uh, the win rate is 80%. Uh, it's typically about 1.5 R. Uh, the odd case, R will be lowered to about 1.3. So because of that, I'm gonna use the lowest values, which would put us again at 80% win rate, uh, an average of 1.3 R. Basically, a uh, max drawdown is 5,000. Uh, and I know that doesn't mean it's 10%, but I'm gonna just gonna, for simplicity, I'm just gonna say that I have about 10% of drawdown, meaning that if I lose 5,000, I'm out. So based on that, uh, and I'm using uh, two contracts currently. So two contracts, my average stop loss is about 15 points. So two contracts, 15 points, times 20 is 600, which in this case would be a 1.2% risk. So basically with two contracts right now, risk is 1.2%, max drawdown 10%, 80% uh, win rate, uh, risk reward ratio is about 1.3. Uh, mostly it's 1.5, but I'm again, I'm lowballing and my win rate is a little bit over 80%, but again, lowballing to be safe. Uh, in 100 trades with this setup, no chance of losing the accounts. Uh, but if I go to 3%, uh, sorry, if I go to three contracts, uh, basically risk becomes 1.8%. Uh, and then in this this scenario, again, no chance. So once I get confidence this week, I'll go to up to three contracts. And um, the strategy does average about 80 to 100 points per week. So with three contracts, I'm expecting to be funded within uh, just under the next two weeks. And then uh, first withdrawal will be two weeks after that. So basically from this video on, uh, Sunday, February 11th, I'm expecting my first withdrawal to come in uh, March 15th <clears throat> because the withdrawal windows for Apex is March 1st to March 5th, and then March uh, 15th to 20th. So mark this down. Uh, first withdrawal is going to be about 2,000 from 10 accounts, uh, March 15th, and that gives us about one month. And that's using the current sizing that I just explained there. Here is the strategy that I personally use. Uh, we're using NQ, three minute chart, a replay feature. I just went back to a random day, uh, January 11th, Thursday. And on the screen, we just have volume. So we're showing volume below and volume to the side. All we're gonna do is see where the volume traded the previous day to map out some zones for the current day, and then use trading volume down below to see if there's volume pushing from zone to zone, and we're gonna take those trades. So real basic, uh, basically most trades are two to one, some are 1.5. So we're just gonna go back and list out all the levels. We have Thursday, 9 a.m. We're gonna uh, also keep Wednesday back to 4 a.m., which is right there to the left, right there. So now you can see all the bars. All we're doing is looking for a drop off in volume to list out a long level or a short level if we're going below. So obviously you can see right here, there's a big drop off. So this could be a good long level and what I do is I put the zones on and then I move them to the order block so that way there's no resistance in the way so here's a long level why because there's a bunch of volume traded here and then there's a big drop off uh, here's a short level same idea lots of trading volume here and then a big drop off right then you can see another long level is just above here however I'll move it up to some bodies to the left so I label the long levels green and the short levels red uh, another, there's a lot of trading in between here, so I, I wouldn't really take a trade. You, we could use this as a short level. Yeah, so we could use this as a short level. And then the best short level would be below the lows. So I hope we can make sense of this. Here there was a lot of trading, uh, tougher, but uh, here there's not much. So I like the long above this zone. Uh, I like the short below this zone. Uh, and then if we go further, I like the short below th this zone, but the best short is below the lows. And then the best long will be above the highs there. So now that we have our zones, we're just gonna zoom in and see if we have to move anything. So yeah, see this long level? I don't like it in, unless we get above the candle bodies to the left. Perfect. Yeah, I don't even like it there. I would want us to go above the highs. Perfect. So if we closed above there, good long level. Here, I would want us to close at least above these bodies. And then shorts all make sense. So now we'll just go into the trading day. Again, on the three minute chart, we'll go to 930. That's the open. So on the open, we're, we're between the 
the long and short level. So right here, I'm watching to see if we close above this level with volume. I take a long. Uh, since these levels are close, I'm basically looking for nothing really, um, or a short below this level. So let's go watch. Okay. All right, so we close below, but there's not much space. So if you just look right here, 86, yeah, we can get about 15 points down. But I don't like that, you know, we close into this order block, so I would ignore it. All right, it goes down, goes down 15 points. No problem. What we want to see now is, again, either the short below here or the long above here. We'll fast forward. Okay, nice. So in a bonus, uh, a bonus trade is if we come to the bottom of a zone, and basically there's a lot of, of volume traded between here and here. So if there's a bullish engulfing off of a low with high volume, it's highly likely we test the top of the zone again. Or uh, same thing with shorting. All right, so this is a close below a short area. Here's where we take a short. problem is don't love the entry because we just had a huge dump so there's a high probability of us just retracing and stopping us out before continuing lower but this is what we take boom so hit the 20 point tp didn't stop us out uh 10 point stop did it as you can see right there dumped first had a reversal candle so here is a two to one and that's what most of the trades are most of them are 10 point stop 20 point tp but then some have to be 15 point stop right it just depends on how far you close from the zone. So that's just one trade. Then we go on to the, the next zone and see if it gets all the way back above. If not, then we won't take any trade. Okay, so here's something interesting. Here is a high volume close above a short zone. You can see the volume on the buy candles are higher than the, than the shorts. So this is a trade that's possible to take, but I don't like that it is still down here like this, and we just already had to move up with a rejection candle. So maybe if we had a pullback again, and then a high volume engulfing, I would take the long. But when it has volume like this, it could push up. Yeah, so it worked out right there. Um, that could have been another win, but it wasn't something I was super confident in, so we didn't take. And again, a trading 9.30 to 12 p.m. only. So let's see. At this point, only real trade I'm looking for is a long above this level or another short below this level. And if we don't get that, then it's a one and done trade for the day. I'm not looking to retake the short here. So curious to see if this one works. Basically, this one closed on the order block. This one closed a bit below the order block. So maybe this short works instead of this one. But again, they're not the highest probability. So I'm not taking them. All right. So that one worked out as well. Uh, but now we have the close below our other short level. So this is where we would take a short again. And they, they look sketchy, right? Because it already had a big move. But when there's high volume, it typically works out. It's about 80% win rate. Nah, this one didn't work. It went about 10 points, stopped us out. High volume reversal candle, this could work for a long. I would like this, if this candle closed like this up here, I would long that, but because there's another short zone, I'm not taking it. Okay, so this trade stopped us out, right? We're hanging out just below our short zone. I don't like this trade because it's just a small body candle, but there's high volume, so I do like it because of the volume. This candle I like better because it wicks above and has a huge rejection with higher volume. So it's a rejection candle, reversal candle, with higher volume holding below the top of our short zone. So this I like, this is another like 80% win rate trade. So all we're gonna do is move the stop above the current candle because it's a reversal candle and then put the TP below 20 points. That's 21, let me put it on 20 points. And then see if that one works. 
Okay, so that one hits. So at this point, we're, we're done. We've taken three trades. Uh, it's close to the 12 anyways. We're done, right? Three trades is max. Uh, we had this win, we had this loss, and this win. The beauty, though, is they're two to ones. I mean, this one was a 1.5 because we had to have the stop above the high. But most of the trades are two to one. Some are 1.5. Uh, that's why I load balled and I put 1.3 R just to be safe. And it's about an 82% win rate. So every 10 trades I take, I'll have about two losses. Here we took three trades. We have one loss. And, you know, there's only a few minutes left. I'm, I'm basically allowed to trade until 12. But after three trades, I'm good. So 20 points. 20 points, 40. It's a net 30 point day. So net plus 30 points. Uh, currently I'm using two contracts, but I will go to three contracts. This puts us at plus, sorry, plus 1.2K uh, times 10 accounts equals plus 12K USD. So that's a, that's a plus 12K day. And then if we say same thing, but with three contracts, which we can do based on the risk of ruin because we won't get uh, blown up. Basically, no chance as long as we keep taking these trades and we follow our, rule, our rules, and we don't have a glitch with Ninja Trader. Now that I know the glitch, I won't be having that problem anymore. So, uh, three contracts is 1.8k, and times 10 accounts, it's just uh, plus 18k. So this is a plus 18k day, just trading the first three hours of the day uh, using this strategy. So this is the strategy that I am and personally, I just transitioned to the past week uh, because I did enough back testing to be able to believe in it, trust it and build confidence in it. So that, that's basically how I have become profitable. So if you ever wanna know the recipe to become profitable is, is you, you do a ton of testing, a bunch of different, different strategies and you, you develop strategies by watching what happens every day. And once you develop a strategy, you do months and months or years of back testing to see what's the win rate and what's what's the best risk reward for the strategy. What's the best time to trade it? What's the best instrument to trade? What's the best time frame to trade? All you work out all those details by doing the months and years of back testing. That's the longest. That's the toughest part. So once you get the strategy that works in all market conditions, um, you know not not all strategies work in all, all market conditions, but. The point is like, can you outlast the poor market conditions for your strategy uh, with proper risk management uh, and and then make it through so that way when there's, there's good days, it outweighs everything. So once you find that strategy, then you have to build confidence. So you start with small size, you take it over and over again and you trade it for a few months or a few weeks, whatever allows you to build confidence. Could take a few weeks, could take a few months. After a few weeks or a few months, then you go to your normal size and then it's gravy from there. But that whole process I explained could be one year, two years, or three years, right? And this is this is how I do it. So I had to transition strategies. It worked very well at the end of last year. Started to not work very well this year, and it was becoming uh, too poor for the future. So I, I basically tr I, I transitioned strategies, and this is the current one that we're working with. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. I post videos every week showcasing my trading strategies, how I'm getting funded, and how I'm getting payouts from Apex. We're gonna showcase the first payout here on this channel. So if you want to learn more strategies to become a consistently profitable trader, if you want to learn about trading psychology, and if you want to learn about how to get funding and payouts, this is the channel for you. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.